Hi, it's Kim from the Shamrock Quilt Studio and today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into the Farmer Star Block. That's this one right down here in the corner and I'm going to show you today some of the techniques that I use to put this block together. We covered it really quickly last week so this week we're going to dig down into the details a little bit and get a little bit more information on this block. We'll see you right after this. Welcome back to the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Hi, and thanks for coming back. Woo, it has been a week here at the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Between work and family obligations and having all these blocks to get done, let me just say, I think I failed miserably because I got the one done that we did in the video last week and then other priorities took over and I've still got a lot of little squares and triangles of fabric to work on. So I thought we would just take a step back and see the reality of what happens with these videos. We always want to step out there and show you uh, the steps and then the finished product. But when you have a, a project that you've got multiples of the same thing, it requires time to not only cut all the pieces for the multiples, but sew them together. And many times that's not covered on the videos you see on YouTube or a TV program. So we're going to step back and show you a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes in getting these done. My goal is today to get at least one more block done in our video. I'm going to need four of them, so that'll get me halfway there. And I think I've pretty much got at least one more full block done. Let's take a look at that and see what we're going to need. There's four total. There's one finished. And then this is the one we're going to work on today. And then I have two more. And these, I think, need a couple more pieces cut. And then they need some of the subsets put together. Now, on this one we're working on, this next block, like I said, I think we've got all of the pieces cut. We have a couple that we need to sew together. But most everything's been cut, so we should be able to move through it pretty quickly. I've got the center block done. And I've got the four nine patches done. And these are a little bit different from nine patches because you don't have the square, the different color squares here in this corner. It's kind of a directional nine patch, but they're completed. What we're missing is we're missing this block right here, this little arrowhead. And for this one, it looks like it's partially put together. We need to put together two more of these elongated flying geese. And then we need to put together the back end of the arrow. And I'm just going to lay out some pieces here. And I think that throughout this video, you may see places where I'm going to speed up the footage because you don't want to spend an hour and a half watching me sew. You probably have better things to do with your afternoon or your evening. So we're just going to take advantage of the magic of video and do that. Okay, so here's what we have. We have these four, we have these two complete, we need to do these two, and then this is complete. We're going to try to do this in order a little bit. What I'm going to do is you see here what has to be done, and because this is a behind the scenes, I'm going to set my stopwatch, and I was going to see if it would give me a rotated view, but it will not. So I'm just going to let it run and we're going to see how long this takes in real time 
to put these pieces together and then make one more block. And I'll disclose to you either during the videotaping or at the end how long the real time was. My iron, I believe, is still plugged in, so there may be some times that I have to step away to iron, but that's the way it happens when you're sewing. So I think that's a good thing. I'm starting it now, and I'm gonna turn it kind of away so it doesn't make me nervous when I'm doing it. I've got my machine all set up with white thread and a white bobbin, and I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna try to take and pin as little as possible so we can really move along with this. And let me see, I need a little piece of fabric to start off here because I'm gonna do a point into the machine first. And off we go. For some reason, I think I've messed it up already, so I'm gonna check it real quick. Make sure we're still on track. Because I'd rather do that than get a bunch of them wrong. Okay, that one's right. That one's right. That one's right. We can make that one work. That is not exactly what we needed. So we're just gonna keep going. And we need this again. When you're batch sewing several pieces that are supposed to be just the same, pay attention not only to how you lay one fabric on top of the other, but also how you're laying them into the machine because that could make the difference between whether they go on correctly or incorrectly. My iron, as it turned out, was not turned on, but I quickly ironed it as well as I could so we could get back to sewing. And now I'm trimming off that seam allowance. Okay, those are four there. And we've got two here. One and two. Scraps in the corner. And let's get these others going. Let's go in there. And let's Okay, that wasn't too bad, was it? And I think we've got all of these pieces together now. I see one seam isn't very straight, but we'll see if we can work with what we have there. Cut off our leader, little leader. And I'm gonna go press again, just so you know, we are at eight minutes. Okay, we're back from the ironing board and we're gonna trim now. I think the seams were all fine. They're close enough that they don't make a difference. But I did want to tell you one thing. Since we're using this uh, stopwatch today, that's just so you know how long it takes if you are going to sit down and sew these. And your experience may vary. Your iron may not work quite as fast. You may not sew as fast. You may sew much faster. It's just a piece of information to give you so that you can kind of 
estimate how long it might take. Because sometimes I think when, even when I say, so 15 minutes a day, that's not just not realistic because by the time you get everything out and so 15 minutes, sometimes you don't accomplish much and you, or you are really stretched to even give 15 minutes some days. And that's kind of the way it's been for me this week. When I had the time, I didn't feel like it. And when I felt like it, I didn't have the time. Okay, let's see where we are. We're now at just about 11 minutes. And we have all four of these done. Make sure we're still recording. And then we have all four of these done. And you can see that even in 11 minutes, how much progress we've made. And it is reasonable to be able to come and do this in small spurts or to take, I don't know, I'm going to guess an hour and be able to get a whole block done. Oh, let me, let me back that up. I already had everything cut. I had some pieces together. So maybe an hour is not a reasonable estimation, but I, I hope you get my point. Okay, we're going to flip out feet. Yeah, there it is so that we have the quarter inch foot with the guide on it so we can get some really nice accurate seams. I don't think we'll need that, but we need, need to change our machine to quarter inch and we're gonna make sure it's back on the 2.4. Okay, so then we're gonna sew this to this. We'll do that four times and we're gonna have those pieces together. And let's see how these fit together. Make sure you line it up properly because it's not going to work if you put this piece on the wrong way. Okay. They're all the same way. We're going to check this really quickly. Yes, that is correct. And we're not matching up anything and the, the, the uh, length of the pieces is pretty much spot on as far as being equal to each other. So we're just going to go for it. Quarter inch seam, 2.4. We've got our special foot on. We're just going to watch where our seam intersects with that point to make sure that it doesn't cut it off, but it's pretty close. That one looked great. So there's one. That one's really close. We'll see how that does. Okay, that's four done. Those are apart. Do a quick check. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. They all came out great. Another quick iron. Okay, these are all done. I want to share with you a little trick that I use when I'm ironing. And I'll put down one piece and iron it. And then the next piece I put down right on top of it or slightly off and iron again. And that means that that first one is really going to get in this case four presses that's my iron speaking to me i do use steam on my iron when i'm doing this so i get really nice creases and even after they're handled a bit they're still uh, very crisp okay so now we're going to put it together and what i'm going to do is put together i'm going to lay it all out and then i'm going to sew across 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 and then we'll put those three strips together. So we're going to transfer now to the overhead camera. And I'm going to lay these out. It's pretty simple. It's, it's got lots of colors in here that kind of help you know where things go to. Because you're going to match up those blues. 
just the way we did last week. And there we go. Now we want to take a minute to look at it and make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to. Does this block match this block? And as far as I can tell, it does. So now we're going to move forward. This time I will need some pens. So we'll just use the pen cushion. And we're going to start right here. And one of the things we want to try to do is get those seams to come together nicely. So I start by getting the ends lined up. If there's a good bit of difference, oh, that's a little short pin. I'll let one extend over the other if I can. And I think I'm going to do that here just a little bit. Now this seam doesn't really need to match with anything. So I'll go ahead and pin it. This one is the one that does. And I think we're in pretty good shape. So we'll just go ahead and pin it. And then we're going to pin here. This is the most difficult one because you've got two points on each side. And the way I deal with that is I take a pin and go in through the back side of this one right at the point to the front side of this one right at the point and then I leave those in place I'm holding that up by the pin and both points are together then I know how they need to sit on top of each other to make those points come together and I'm going to show you something on this one if I can get a hold of a pen Okay, you can see on this one that the center block is a little smaller than the arrow block. So it's extending over just a little bit. I'd rather have that seam allowance right there a little bit shy of a quarter inch and keep those points together than make a match. But I am going to put a pin back here so it holds that in place because I'll have to take that out when I sew. Okay, and then we're going to do this one. It's the same thing. I think that one in the middle, if I were going to go back and do this again, I would probably overcut that center piece just by a couple of threads and then overcut the other pieces just by a couple of threads so that it's a little more generous than it is. Okay, and some of these where you've got these diagonal seams, you just have to kind of trust that they'll go together right because you'll drive yourself crazy trying to pin them. Okay, let's, let's sew. Centerpiece. I'll keep that center pin in until I just have to get it out. And in those areas where one piece of fabric was a little bit bigger, longer, wider, however you want to describe it, than the other one, I'm going to take the bigger one and run it on the um, edge guard of this. Let's see how we did. I'm going to hold those because I'll need them. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick about this block. For some reason, when you sew them together, you sewed these two. <laughs> but because when you flip the block, these two were on this side. So we have to kind of adjust it a little bit because this is the way it comes out. And we know that's not right. So we're going to take these three and we're going to flip these so that we get what we're looking for. Now, would that have driven you crazy if you hadn't thought through how that was working and then all of a sudden you'd say, I sewed it wrong. How could that happen? 
probably. It would mean. I'd probably rip it out, sew it back together, only to find out it was the same way, and then realize it was not a mistake at all. Okay, so then there's the three other ones. We're going to go ahead and sew these on just the same way. Okay, there's one. This is the one where we're going to point together. Points together. Whoops. Okay, and now we sew. Okay, let's see what we've got again. It's really coming together pretty quickly. And as you put these blocks together, what you'll notice is you start out with little tiny seams. They're really short. And then you get bigger seams as you start to put things together until you get to the end of the block and you've got fairly long seams. Okay. And I always like at this point to kind of look how things are coming together. That matched up perfectly. We're good there. These points came together very nicely. That one's a little bit cut off, but it's just barely. And I think this one is close enough. It's a little bit off, but I think we're going to roll with it. And I'm going to press these and then we'll do our last two seams. Okay, we're all pressed and we're ready for the last two seams on this block. It's looking good. And we're going to start just by pinning them together. We're going to try to match seams where we can. It just gives you a crisper block when you do that. We do have a little bit of difference in size here. But it looks like it's just in one block. Let's see how that's going to work. We're going to ease it a little bit. We can match that one up. That's good. Point to point. It. Okay, I think that will be fine. If I'm ever given the chance or a choice when pressing, I'm going to press my fabric to the darker fabric so it will not show as much. Okay, let's sew it. In the places that you don't pin, you want to make sure that your fabric does not creep away from where you want it to be. I just stuck myself. Ooh. Okay, let's see how that did. Okay, my, my seams here did really well. My points are a little bit off. I don't even know if you can tell it there or not. Don't, I don't think you will. So we're just going to move on and see how the next one comes out. Okay, we're going to start end to end. And I think we're going to sew on this side. I always find it's easier to sew on the side that has the most seams visible. Because then you can pin 
to hold those seams in place and you can adjust as necessary. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, we've pinned those points together and we're gonna keep in mind this time of making sure they're not too close to each other. Well, making sure the seam line is not on that point when we pass it. Okay, let's see. Okay, we're looking good. This one almost has as many seams on the front as it does on the back. Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm going to press. We're going to come back and show you what it looks like, check our time, and be done for the day. So I'll be right back. Okay, final press has been done, and I'm ready to show you the completed farmer's block. I've got a lot of strings on here, so we'll need to pay attention to that. But here it is. There it is, the farmer's block. Number two of four complete. And I say this one is all together as good as the first one and like I said if I did it again I would make these little pieces here just a little bit bigger so I could maybe trim down to the size I needed they're mm, a little small but they'll work okay so we're good we're good to go with this one I did give it a really good press both on the front and the back and made sure that everything was pulled out as it needed to be my points, I've got one that got cut off just a little bit. And these across here are just a little bit off. And I always measure those just so you know when I say it's a little bit off what it is. Less than an eighth of an inch on that one. Even less on this one. These two are right on, just that one's cut off a little bit. But I think you can see that even in this overhead camera, you really can't tell that. Okay, let's check our time. How long did this take? And this is actual time from where we started. Stop it. 34 minutes. So that you'll probably see this video and it'll probably be edited down in the 20 minute, 25 minutes, something like that. But real time from the place we started to right now, 34 and a half minutes. So that gives you an idea of how long it realistically would take to do something in a, in a half hour sewing or 15 minutes sewing. And certainly some of the other pieces that you're putting together, like if you're putting together this little mini block that goes in or sub block that goes into this you can do that in 15 minutes and if you're doing all four you could probably come in and put the left pieces on all of these in 15 minutes and then come back another 15 minutes and do the other side and batch your sewing because i do find that batch sewing is much more efficient time wise Sewing one block at a time gives you more satisfaction because you get a finished product. But um, that's it for today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And always, if you like a video, give us a thumbs up because it helps us on the channel to get more people exposed to a different kind of sewing, a little bit about my journey in sewing and sharing tips with you. If there's anything that you think would have made this process even more efficient or more fun, let me know in the comments. I always love to see your comments. We'll see you next week here at the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Bye for now.